Hi there, I'm Raghvashri. I hail from India. I am an aspiring dentist driven by passion, a poet by choice, an artist born from a hobby and a blogger and a voice to be heard. Today I'm here on the behalf of the Teen Pop magazine. The Teen Pop magazine, which is the first online magazine for high schoolers that gives young, aspiring journalists the opportunity to share their voice, build their writing portfolio and receive peer feedback and mentorship in the editorial industry. If you would like to write for them, check their website www.theteenpopmagazine.com. Today, I am in conversation with the founder president of Risk School, Sandali Srivasta. She is an incoming junior attending high school in Texas who is passionate about computer science and programming. She loves art, music and writing and she enjoys teaching younger students in a free time about empowerment. Risk School is an initiative that provides online resources free of cost and accessible to all students regardless of age. These resources are in the form of written articles in academic subjects such as English, science, maths, and strive to give education regardless of current events, which can be viewed in our blog section. Hi there. How are you doing, Sandali? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. And glad to hear from you. I'll go straight into the, into the interview. Can you tell us why and how you chose to make your transition from law and research to human development field? Okay, currently I'm interested in computer science and I've always had that interest since I was younger because I've seen both of my parents who are in computer science and I've developed an interest for programming ever since then. Wow, really fascinating. Thank you. How many years did it take to work on this idea and why did you take, why did you take it till 2019 to finally no launch it? The idea itself started a couple months back when I did research on inaccessibility with testing in the US. And after that, it took me a month to actually get my team and talk to my friends about how to launch this idea. And then we eventually decided, I think, two months ago to have our resources in an online blog. Is there a linear or progressive style of starting an NGO or a foundation? Can you walk us through the process of developing or starting an NGO? I think first, after you decide, you do your research on exactly why you want to start this nonprofit and how to start it, it's important to have a team with you to actually help you through this because it's really hard for one person to start their own initiative. I think after you start having your base team, you can start getting basic functions done. And once you start recruiting more people and having an even larger team working with you, it makes it so much easier to actually get your work done. Okay. Could you describe the name of the organization, how you, come, how you came up with the idea? So the name of our organization is kind of a play on words. We figured that our, we wanted our website to be kind of like an online school because there is resources for every subject and also we had competitions where students could interact with each other. So we decided to think of it as a virtual school. Um, the, word, the first word of our name is virtue. So, and then we mix the two words together and change the S, the CH in school to just a K. Oh, wow. Such a great idea. Thank and you. it's very clever too, the, the way you came up with the name. <laughs> now let's talk about funding. How has your organization been able to source and manage funds? So far, so we wanted our, um, the base team wanted our entire organization to be fully nonprofit. We didn't, since we were providing online blogs, we didn't see any reason to actually start fundraising. So right now we've just been writing articles and having competitions for free. So there have been no funds. Okay. This is so shows that donors are becoming more informed about how NGOs spend donated funds. From your perspective, what's the percentage that an upcoming NGO should spend to overcome the overhead? By overhead, do you mean base functions? Yes. Okay. Um, I think it depends on exactly what um, the organization is doing. If the organization is similar to mine, where it's mostly just editorial blogs and written resources, I don't think a lot of that money should be spent overhead. However, if the organization is focusing on um, 
is focusing on interacting and partnering with a bunch of different organizations, then I feel like it is necessary to uh, contact, uh, to spend a lot of money overhead. Okay. Putting your life into perspective, when you sense fear or discouragement, how do you generate confidence? Whenever I sense fear or discouragement, I automatically think of a bunch of scenarios that could happen, negative scenarios. For example, if I'm nervous about an upcoming test, I always think, oh, maybe I'll fail. Oh, maybe I'll get kicked out of school. But instead, if I want to gain confidence, I have to think that this, is, this event is a very small thing and it likely won't make such a huge difference in my life. When I'm in that mindset, then it's much easier to be more confident. I think it's pretty cool the way you said that. <laughs> and I think I'll remember that the next time when I'm kind of discouraged. Thank What's you. the hardest part of running an NGO? Like what are the daily obstacles that you need to combat to keep your NGO afloat? So I think in the case of my nonprofit, since it's very small and like um, it's, an, it's technically a blog, so we have to depend on views. I think the hardest part is the fact that there's so many nonprofits that we have to compete with. And I think outreach is also a major issue because like we have to learn how to market ourselves properly and we need to make sure that like a lot of people know who we are and what we do. To the people reading this, I'm probably thinking that they can't accomplish what you have accomplished. What would you say to them? I think accomplishment doesn't come from any one personal trait. I think the main thing is hard work. And even though everyone says that if you work hard, you'll get everything, when it comes to the most basic task, the people that actually get what they want done and the people that actually achieve far are the ones that put in as much effort as they can. When they feel like they can't accomplish something, they keep working and that's how they get their work achieved. Nothing is ever gonna be handed to you. Wow. You have, it's been a delight to interview you. It's and thank you so much for coming today to, for this interview. It really means a lot. Thank you.